Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dom and as you can see we are getting into a different kind of video today. This is a Q&A video questions from you guys out there on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook. Basically any questions that you have, feel free to leave them in the comments during this video and tweet them to me, post them on my Facebook page. All those links are going to be down in the description, but I have gathered questions for this video and I am ready to get them all out there. First, many of you guys may not know about me. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, Obviously, my name is Dom, <laughs> and I'm married. I have a daughter and three dogs. I do voiceover work outside of all this YouTube stuff, and uh, obviously, I write for a couple different websites, um, one of them being appadvice.com and my website, macmixing.com, which is kind of just like my blog. I am into music. I really do like playing music. I've been playing music for a long time, but we'll get into some of those details a little bit later as they pertain to a question that was asked by one of you guys. First off, I want to thank everybody for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos like this and you want to have more Q&A sessions exactly like this, then please leave this video a thumbs up and I'll be sure to make more of these for you guys if I know that you like them. So the first question comes from Jonathan on Facebook and he asks, overall, what has been the best iPhone 5 case you've reviewed? Well, that's going to be a hard one for me to answer because I obviously have gone through quite a few different iPhone cases and I test them out on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and that guy just took me out. But I'd have to say the one that I rocked the longest, that was my daily driver for a while, was the Spigen Ultra Thin Air, and it's a super thin case. It's barely even there. It's probably not even there enough to call it a full-on case because it's not going to protect your device a whole lot except from little scratches, but that's why I liked it. I'm a simple kind of person. I like simple, thin cases, and that happened to be one that really stood out to me as being super thin and also, like I said, protecting against scratches and stuff. And I'll be sure to drop a link for this down below in the description. Uh, that is my favorite one. But as of recently, I don't even rock cases anymore. I'll review them and I'll take the time to review the product, but as far as my main iPhone, I don't even have a case on it. I don't use cases anymore. I kind of like the naked feeling of the iPhone now. I've, I've been really into that lately, so I don't know, man. It, it's really hard to tell when you do so many different case reviews. I truly believe, though, that there are different cases for different occasions. So depending on what you're doing, you know, you might need a more protective case on your phone. That's why it's good to have a few different options. And now I know this wasn't asked, but I want to get it out of the way. My favorite iPad or iPad mini case. In my opinion, the clear winner for me goes to the Zugu case Prodigy. I reviewed the iPad mini case Prodigy back a little while ago, but I think this is probably one of the best folio cases ever made. It supports multiple angles, it's very protective, it's got a nice professional look to it, and uh, go ahead and click the link down below in the description to check out the review on that guy, but I really do love that case, and I highly suggest you go check it out. So the next question we have here is from Colin, again on Facebook, and he asks, When did you start making music and when did you start making YouTube videos? Well, that's a very interesting question there because I never intended on getting into YouTube, but uh, we'll get into that in a second. As far as music goes, I've been into music pretty much since grade school. I started playing the trombone and then I played the alto sax and then I wanted to play something, quote, cooler, so I started playing guitar and... Uh, I've been doing that ever since, you know, that kind of got me into production, which uh, actually, ironically, led me into YouTube. So I started doing audio production, and uh, I was really fascinated with that whole world, audio production and music production and stuff like that. And I wanted to share my knowledge with other people. So back in late 2011, I put up a couple of tutorial videos on some of the audio production stuff I was doing at the time just to show people you know how to do things and and simple stuff like that but it caught on and people started liking it so I kept doing it and actually you can still find those videos if you go to youtube.com slash Mac mixing audio they are on that channel that's another channel that I have that I actually have been uploading to recently all things audio production so if you're into that kind of stuff head over there and I plan to have a lot more content coming on there soon but you can go see the first video that I put on YouTube. But shortly after that, I started getting into reviews for other products that were related to Macs and then to iPhone. And then it kind of snowballed 
from there into what I do now, which is pretty much everything. So it was all kind of unexpected, to be honest. I didn't expect to do anything like this ever. And I love it to death. I love that you guys like watching these videos. And I really appreciate the fact that you do watch them still. So let's move on to our final question, which comes from Aaron on Twitter. And he asks, what was the first product that got you into Apple? Well, aside from the number munchers that I used to play back in grade school when I was in like first grade on an Apple II, the real product that got me into Apple products was the iMac G4, also known as the Sunflower. When I got one of these computers, it changed the way I thought about everything and I was instantly addicted and now I am just kind of crazy with Apple stuff and it's overflowing at my house. So that is what got me into Apple. Like I said, I always played number munchers back in like first grade. If any of you guys remember that, playing number munchers on the Apple II with the floppy disks, that was a classic time in my life and I will cherish that. But the Sunflower, the iMac G4, got me addicted and hooked on Apple products and I never looked back from there. Thanks again for everybody that submitted questions. I appreciate it. Please be sure to leave more down below in the comments if you want to have your question featured on a future Q&A video. You can also tweet them to me at MacMixing or post them on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash MacMixing. Once again, I'm so grateful for all the support that you guys give me on this channel. I really appreciate it and I have a lot of fun doing this and I don't intend on stopping anytime soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please be sure to leave me a big old thumbs up if you did. Thanks again for watching everybody. This is Dom and have a great day. <laughs>